my aunt's trainer, Pete Bartlett, lived down the street. Um, I just I asked my man to take me to the gym and never looked back, really. Yeah, I won eight Welsh titles, six British titles, a um, couple of international titles and stuff. Can't remember what they call, but yeah, you know, good couple of titles. What was your ambition as an amateur boxer? We, we were just boxing for the fun, or we we were looking long term to being a pro and being a champion as a pro. No, I, di- I didn't really think about being a pro at first. Just t- just took it as it come really, and just fighting whenever. And a chap to turn pro, and and but you know, enjoying it a lot more now. I never used to watch a lot of boxing, but you know, I'm a big fan of boxing. I went back when when I first turned pro and when I was amateur. I didn't really watch a lot. when interested. As a as a kid, as a seventeen year old kid. He was strong as well, he was a man. He was yeah. a man, he was fighting boys, he was still boys. Or oh, is it like more mature? Yeah. yeah, but then I thought, right, then when he goes up now and he's got to fight men, there's going to be a big, you know, there's a massive change in it. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't, you got in it. Yeah. You just smashed every day, you stopped him a second on him. Yeah. For your first few professional fights, you trained with Vince Cleverly. Uh, what was it like training with Vince and with uh, Nathan Cleverly, who was world champion at the time? Yeah. Um, it was obviously good, really good experience. Um, obviously, in the end, me and Vince didn't work out. I left him for Gary, but um, yeah, at the time, it was good experience. It was great to be training next to Nathan, obviously, WBO world champion. Um, yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed while, while I was there. You know, with the Gary Lockett camp, in your experience, what makes Gary such a, a good trainer? Uh, I don't for a start, he didn't take no shit. Got you know working hard all the time, and um, he just he explains things very well. He, you know, a lot of people just <clears throat> a lot of trainers don't really say too much, but Gary get in there, he's been there and done it, so he can he can go every through everything with you and you know explain it really good. Like Gary's a very straight talker. I mean, we sometimes he's just brut- brutally straight. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like in the gym? Was it was that difficult to take to sometimes when he first started with Gary? Um, no, not really. I'd, I'd rather him be straight to me and just, you know, say as it is. Um, when you're doing things wrong and stuff, he just, he just correct you, and um, I think that's the best way to be, to be honest. With you. And also in your gym, there's a sort of a, a good group of guys around the sort of same age. You seem to have a good laugh and a good bit of banter. How important is that to you? Yeah, I think um, I think it's really important, you know, being in the gym with all them boys and Gary, all having a laugh. Obviously, we got to work hard, and you know. We, train really really hard but um, that bit of banter in the gym I think it helps and it makes going to the gym a lot more enjoyable. Have you got any examples of some of the sort of things that happen oh. in the gym amongst all yourselves? I, d- I don't know there's just there's too many. <laughs> Just, there's something going on all the time. We were constantly laughing and joking, always like teasing each other and stuff. It's just all good banter. Well, when I interviewed Lewis Reese the other day, what happened? Can you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, walked behind the camera <laughs> naked. I, I don't think he showed that. It's been a hard, hard fight. Like, the last to start that again. <laughs> Your first big fight where you sort of, um, people sat up and took notice of you was when you fought Ronnie Heffron. Can you just tell us a little bit about that fight? Yeah, well, um, he was... Ephraim was obviously a really known... Like, he was going to be the next big thing. Um, he only lost once before to Commonwealth champion uh, Dent Vassell. And um, I was probably the underdog going into that fight to a lot of people. And, um, well, I just I just took him apart, really. Stopped him in six rounds. That was a, a big statement, you know. A lot of people were very surprised with that fight. I mean, on social media, a lot of people didn't really know who you were, yeah. apart from people within the sort of Welsh boxing scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, how, how did you... I mean, you, you handled that fight quite easily, really. It, wasn't, it didn't look that difficult a fight. Yeah, it was, I was really comfortable in there. I just... Um, I, I knew I always had a style of causing problems anyway, so I just... We didn't even really have a game plan. I just boxed how I boxed. And, um, yeah, like I say, I made it pretty easy, really. After the uh, Heffron fight that uh, led to your last fight last Monday against um, Lomax for the Commonwealth title, mm-hmm. did you feel the pressure? I mean, I know probably 
Lomax is a, on paper an easier fight than Heffron, yeah. but it's for a Commonwealth title, which is one of the, probably the big three titles domestically. Did, did you feel any pressure going into that fight? Uh, no, I didn't, really, to be honest with you. I, I knew that... I don't, obviously, I didn't underestimate him, but I knew that it, would, that it was going to be a straightforward fight for me. So, um, but yeah, it was a little bit more pressure. I know when it was for a title or whatever, it's my first title, so... But um, I talked to her really well. I enjoyed it. And for anyone who hasn't seen the fight, I don't think it's been shown on television yet. Could you just talk us through? I mean, it was a first round knockout. Yeah. But could you just talk us through the uh, the well the round? Um, well, at first, Gary told me not to not to rush and try and hurt him. Sorry. But um, when we were there, I realised how slow he was. He threw a couple of jabs, and I just started countering him straight away early on. Um, as soon as I landed clean, he was all over the place. So. I, I knew I could finish him, so I just dived on him. And I think he was stopped at 2 minutes 47 seconds, first round. So, good win. How difficult is it for a professional boxer in general? You know, your friends, probably all your sort of people around your age, are out drinking and partying. Yeah, and pe- you, you, people don't like see that part where you've you know, you got to stay in and you know, to go for food, you can't drink. Uh, you know, most just casual fans see that you get in there beat someone up and get paid good money for it, but it's, it's not as easy <laughs> as it looks. You've got to um, obviously be really dedicated and just, you know, staying in for months on end. Your mates are going out drinking and whatever and you're going out for a run, like, so it's, yeah, it's not easy, but rewards are all there, you know, worth it. I had a laugh the other day. I said, you know, on Facebook, was it was a picture of yourself and your girlfriend in the car and she was eating at McDonald's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nightmare. <laughs> I couldn't... Uh, it's not always easy to put up there, but sometimes I had to tell her to do it anyway because she can't always go without. Just because I got, you know, I nobody makes me do it. I I choose to do it for myself, so I don't want to hurt the suffer as well. <laughs> How important is to have a, a close partner or wife or girlfriend when you're a professional boxer who's there uh, to support you and sort of put up with? I dare say you're probably quite moody as a build of the fight. Oh yeah, she'd have, she'd have terrible trouble. I take everything out there. <laughs> like say you take everything out on people you're closest to yeah. um, and it helps when you're staying in and when everybody's going out and stuff and she, she is really, she's really supportive like you know so can't be there. What's next? Well, you, you got, obviously uh, I'll, I'll do a break at Christmas time now and so what fights do you hope to have in the uh, new year? Um, well, there was a lot of talk of the Liam Smith fight for the obviously for the light middle British title but um, like I said I'm just going to leave that up to Gary and Frank Warren, whoever, just see where they come with and I'll fight whoever they put in front of me. I know, I know you're a fighter, and, but the Liam Smith fight, if, if it could be made, would, would you take it? I know perhaps there might be better options for you and for, and for Liam Smith as well, to be fair. Yeah. But, but would you take the fight in theory if it could be made? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I'd take it straight away, but like you said, it's got, it got, got to be worth it. it got to be for the right money, you know, because like I say, there is other options, so... It's something which I don't have to do, but that's what everybody wants. So I would like, I would like to get that fight. Yeah, I think it's probably a big, a big risk fight for both of you, really. I mean, yeah, probably exactly. both around the sort of same level. Perhaps. Probably, probably more risk for him to be honest. Yeah, with Liam's me, got a slightly higher profile at the moment than you. Yeah, and he's but, he's pushing pushing on the bigger things though. But I don't know. Just like I say, just see what comes up, and I'll fight whoever they put in front of me. What's the big boxing dream for Liam Williams? Um, world champion, man. Every, everybody sets out to be world champion. It's not going to be easy. And um, it doesn't always happen for everyone, but hopefully if I keep working hard and getting the right fights, someday I'll get there.